two things. What struck me about the gospel today, out of that beautiful long gospel, um, the <coughs> two disciples on the path to Emmaus, was the word that they said to Jesus, stay with me, stay with us. You know, they're going back and forth, and you know they had this long discussion of all these things that were revealed, and they're, you know, what are we going to do now, and was this all for nothing, and, you know, he's dead, and people are saying that he's risen, and, and so on and so forth, and, and Jesus is with them listening. Can you imagine what the Lord is thinking? I mean, listening to them, it's like, doesn't anybody understand? You know? And he realized they don't. They don't understand. And so as, as they go through this, this walk and this conversation, it's getting dark. And I know that feeling. I know that feeling like, don't go yet. Stay with me. And you know what? We all know that feeling. We all know that feeling in those moments of fear or um, euphoria. Don't go. Just stay with me, Jesus. Just a little bit. Stay with me, Lord. <coughs> Maybe it is something that you hear from the Lord. Maybe it's something audible. Maybe something more tangible. Maybe it's just the Spirit of God that's present and you sense His presence in, in those moments or those times. And so you just stay with me. And so Jesus stayed with them. How beautiful. And then at the moment of the breaking bread, you know, so he sat down and ate. And that was the other thing that really got me in, in this reading. And what Father said about Jesus encountered them, especially in hospitality, as they were eating. You know, it just it's like bells are ringing in my heart because it's something the Lord put on my heart from the very beginning, that we should always have a pot of soup on the stove. Because it's comforting, it's, it's welcoming, it's time to share. And it's something to do as you're opening your heart, too. And so that it just, you know, I, I just feel so confirmed. And it's such a beautiful feeling. I remember those moments after Jesus had revealed everything that he told me when he appeared to me in 1992. And, and my brain didn't get it all, it was just so much. And, you know, over the years, uh, as, as time unfolded, the Lord put them out there for me again, and they made sense as, as time passed. But I just can't get it out of my mind of how I've sensed the Lord leaving when it was all over. And half of my head, half of my body felt like it was dangling in heaven someplace, and my feet were on the ground. And I just couldn't bear for him to leave. I just couldn't bear for him to leave. Not at that moment. I just needed another moment. I just needed one more thing. Didn't know what it was, but I just needed one more thing. And that's when I said to him, Jesus, would you bless me? And it was like, bam, bullseye. He, he had the most beautiful smile. And he just turned around and he touched his heart and he raised his hands. And that's how I came to know the image of divine mercy. I never saw it before. I never heard about it. I didn't know that moment that's what it was until later when I, I recognized that I saw it. Jesus, will you bless me? And that's what I did. You know, <clears throat> we think about the things that Father said today in his homily. Think about the gospel readings for today. And I have to tell you, you know, and you know, I've said this so many times, and that's why we followed the directive of the Lord to bring St. Joseph back out to the forefront of the church and our devotion to him to renew that again. The most frequent prayer request to the Divine Mercy Center is from parents and family members for the return of their children or family members to the church. It's the most frequent request. <coughs> and if you read the diary of St. Faustina, Jesus teaches her his greatest prayer, his most pleasing prayer, 
is the prayer for the conversion of sinners. That's all of us. For a deeper conversion, for those to bring back to the church, but for a deeper conversion, this pilgrimage that we're on, as Father recommended, this pilgrimage for each and every one of us should get deeper and deeper and more close to God. So close, so intimately, that we could have those Emmaus moments. Don't leave yet. Just another minute, Jesus. Just stay another minute. And he gives us to know him if we give the time. And I'm, I'm going to shut up now because then I'm going to go into a, a home that I have to get permission for. But anyway, God willing, that'll be for Divine Mercy Sunday. We're so on track. We are so on track by following his mission of mercy. You, you can't do anything better than everything possible for this mission of divine mercy. If our heart cries so much for our family members to come closer to Jesus, to con have that deeper conversion, can you imagine the passion of Christ when he looks down at this earth and he sees so many, either tempted, lukewarm, or away altogether? So many striking things come to my mind. I know Charlotte had shared something um, with Mary Jane and asked if I could speak about it or, or whatever, um, and it has to do with uh, a gentleman who's been talking about a woman who has uh, image, image and uh, statuary and certain things that are weeping precious oils in Michigan, in, in our area somewhere. And <clears throat> um, rarely do I go through those kinds of things because we have so much here of our own to do. But I had it in my heart. I felt, um, I felt that it was important for me to take a look at it. And so I did. I schemed through. And I can't judge any of that. It's not my place. But I recognized some same sayings in that, as I have throughout some of the things that are going on in the world. And it doesn't surprise me in the least. The way Jesus met those disciples as they were walking on that pilgrimage to Emmaus, as we walk this pilgrimage, do you not think God is going to, uh, going to encounter us? Do you think Jesus is not going to speak to us himself? Yes. But also through other prophets and great special gifts of the other people in the world? Of course he is. You know, he didn't just shut the Bible at the book of Revelation and said, I'm done. You're on your own. You know? He continues to send out the prophets and those special gifts of the people that we may hear, that we may listen. And so for us here, for me today, for these past 20-something years, when Jesus proclaimed that it was his desire for this center, this Divine Mercy Center. Grace, I'm laughing at Grace. She's all the way in the back there, but even that is a miracle. You know, Grace's presence with us as a prayer minister. You know, when we first started, my first spiritual director, and we started meeting together in groups. We were at St. Thecla's. Grace was going to a meeting at church, at St. Thecla's church, and she walked into the wrong meeting and sat in our room where Divine Mercy was meeting. And she never left. She's been here with us ever since. But how God brings people together. But this place, this center of his divine mercy, this is the call on his heart. This is what Jesus asked for. I desire this place of refuge at my people. And this is the whole purpose here. There's not, you know, 50 million things like you would find in a massive church or any church. They have great responsibilities and there's it's a, it's a whole different ballgame, if you will, for lack of a better phrase. This is a mission. This is a place that is on the heart of Christ. And all of our hearts take part in it every time we engage him here. The focus here is just his divine mercy and spreading the mission of mercy. Every one of us knows somebody who doesn't know about divine mercy. And that's the call on your heart. 
not only to give them a pamphlet, but, and that's important to give something tangible, but also information. Evangelizing them or re-evangelizing them to get them back into the church or just even just to come with you here anytime during the week. Just coming through those gates and into this place, you're encountering Christ, his divine mercy. This is his design. And it's meant for all of us. The more we give to it, and that simple giving is our self, our time, the more we encounter him, doesn't matter how much we know or how little we know or how much our sins or how perfect or imperfect, none of that matters to him. None of it matters. One by one, he said, and everyone counts. Everyone. Nobody's not important enough. Nobody's too important. Here we're all in the same ark. And he's feeding us. He's healing us. He's continuing to bless us. Every time we come before him, his mercy is being poured out. And not just for us, as it says in the diary. As we come together and we pray that chaplet for whatever those intentions and those people are, those people receive the graces as well as ourselves. We had a group in here yesterday and um, one of the women asked, what about praying the chaplet with somebody who doesn't believe in the chaplet or doesn't believe in God or whatever? You know, and that happens. Sometimes you're in a group setting, sometimes you're you know, at someone's sick bed and there's somebody there in the group, uh, family members, whatever, that really doesn't believe in God or kind of sort of does or whatever. And so we, you know, we'll pray the chaplet and you know, they'll hold it in their hand or they'll just follow along. Do they receive graces? You bet they do. Jesus states that in the diary of St. Faustino. Even just praying the chaplet one time, even just gazing on the image one time, let alone spending your life as a disciple of divine mercy. It doesn't get holier than that. Mercy and love are synonymous. Mercy is the greatest attribute of God. So anything we do, great, great graces we are receiving. Anything. And that pilgrimage should bring us to a deeper, deeper union with the mercy of God. And remember, do not use your eyes when you are serving the Lord. You don't need them. In fact, they trip you up. The eye of the soul, that soul where Jesus resides, the very spirit, the very breath of God that will guide us and take us through those times of difficulties, and the high times as well. Be there with us, triumphant, as he was at the wedding of Cana. Many weddings, many births, many great times, along with the difficult times too. He is with us. You can bet your life that he is with us. God bless you. Thank you for everything that you do. Just one last comment. Um, we're having this event, this fundraiser uh, coming up, and we've heard some remarks about the tickets being kind of expensive. The tickets are $150. They are expensive. It's expensive for me, too. I'm saving up for them. The reason why we're having that kind of a fundraiser, because I don't really like all that kind of stuff, but you got to do what you got to do to pay the gas bill and put the lights on and do that kind of stuff. The reason why we're doing that is so that we don't have to have a fundraiser every month. That you get burned out on. You're always asking for money, you know, that kind of thing. So let's do it one time, get it over with, have a good time, and be done with it. And then the rest of the things throughout the year are the things that we can all be a part of as well. Everybody is invited. The tickets are for everybody. Maybe you have to save up a few dollars if you want to come and be part of this wonderful strolling thing and auction and all of that kind of stuff. It's wonderful. 
and it'll be a lot of fun. But there are many things that we have throughout the year that are family-based. And for me, the most important things and what my focus is really on is Divine Mercy Sunday, the Feast of Our Lady of Sorrows, and those things that we do that are spiritually uplifting as well. Those are most important. But we do, we do have to you know, keep the doors open and the lights on. And it's expensive. Oh my gosh, I never imagined when I, when I walked into this place. <laughs> but you learn and you live, and I don't care. God has blessed us. He continues to bless us. I don't even know how we do what we do because we're not a church. We don't have, you know, the um, programs and stuff that the churches receive money for and all of that kind of stuff. It is from the, what people have, really. After people pay their bills and, you know, tithe to their church, we get what they have from their hearts. And, and we do well and we're surviving. You know, we always, it's, it's just like home. Okay. So I, I just want you to understand that, please. Don't think that we're, you know, kind of into Heidi, Heidi Faludi, all that kind of stuff, because it's not my cup of tea at all. I just need to pay the bills. It's a one-time thing, and I would love to see everybody come. Everybody's going to get uh, an invitation. You're welcome, everybody, anybody out there. Everybody is welcome. Maybe you have to save up like I do. Like I said, that's fine, whatever. And maybe you can't make it to this. That's okay. It's okay because there's plenty of other good things too, okay? Just so you understand. God love you and thank you for everything that you do. Most importantly, for your prayers, your dedication. God bless our prayer ministers who dedicate themselves, that are here serving and interceding for, for everybody, for the ministry. Thank you with all of my heart. I could never thank you enough. God love you and God bless your families. Amen.